um, thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to come here and, and, and tell us uh, tell you about this uh, three four year project. It has it has been going on now with home based uh, chemotherapy. Uh, this is my disclosure slide. Um, so what I'll tell you is uh, how the patient can put the hospital uh, into a backpack and bring it home. That's basically what we've been doing. So sending the patient home, allowing them to receive rather complex chemotherapy uh, in the home without any healthcare professionals being present. Um, so, and this has mainly been in acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, I don't know how familiar you, you are with this disease. It's a very, very severe, um, life-threatening uh, blood cancer. Uh, and traditionally, when I remember 15 years back when I entered this specialty, the patients were admitted to the hospital and spent 90, 100 days in hospital for the treatment of this disease. They, they received very intensive chemotherapy, two to four courses, sometimes also an allogeneic stem cell transplantation. And, and the, it's very intense chemotherapy, so the bone marrow is suppressed. You have no production of red blood cells, platelets, white blood cells. So you have a very severe propensity for infections, bacterial and fungal infections, and you need transfusions with blood and platelets. Most patients are equipped with a catheter that is uh, in a vein, so it's easier to give blood, to give transfusions, to give antibiotics, to give chemotherapy, to draw, draw blood samples. Uh, a lot of them acquire, hospital, uh, acquire infections at the hospital. They are very inactive, uh, and as treatment progressed, many of the patients would tell us that I become more and more inactive when I'm admitted to the hospital, like this bored patient uh, on the cartoon. They don't sleep well, they have a low energy level, and li limited contact with family and friends, of course. So I'll just shortly tell you about some previous experience that, that we've had. Um, this is a, a study um, many years ago conducted by a, a nurse who has been um, involved uh, throughout the years in the project. And he set out a, a randomized study to educate patients to handle their own uh, Hickman catheter that you see here. Um, so they were able to to uh, change the dressing. We don't use, to use the dressing anymore. They were able to, some of them, draw blood from this catheter and to flush it, uh, to, to let it stay open, you may say. And so half the patients were educated, the other half were, were, had, had all these procedures done by the healthcare professionals. And as you see on this, this is the survival of the catheter. So the people who, the patients who actually learned how to, to take care of their own catheter, they had a very much better survival of the catheter. So they didn't get as many infections as the other patients. So this has been sort of the way that we educate people ever since to take care of their own catheters, at least the leukemia patients in my department. The other project we had also done by Tom Miller was to systematically allow the patients, when they had the low counts, usually I don't think it's done very much anymore, but still in some institutions, patients are inpatients. So instead of having them as inpatients feeling well, going there and waiting for the infections to come, we systematically educated the patients to be at home on prophylactic uh, antibiotics. They came in every uh, day to every second day to the hospitals for transfusion and infection control. And we didn't see any serious incidents, and we could dismiss a lot of patients during the first course of chemotherapy, which is quite unusual. And in 26% uh, in of these, we had no readmissions. Uh, if you look at the following courses, when the bone marrow is well, we call it consolidation. There, we could dismiss 90% of patients uh, in, 100, in a total of 129 uh, consolidation courses, and no readmission in 60% of these. So this has been the way we've been doing uh, with the patients since 2000, 2006. Um, but patients still have to be admitted for administration of chemotherapy 
for if you get four courses, courses it would be for a total of 30 days. And many of these patients are feeling quite well. So uh, I was actually inspired, sorry, I was inspired by uh, the University College Hospital in London through my collaboration with the AML uh, community in the UK. And they have built up this uh, unit in, um, in an outpatient clinic that administers complex chemotherapy to patients. But they, uh, the patients there stay in a nearby patient hotel in central London, and they meet uh, in the unit every day. So the patients are not at home. And we thought, well, this is very inspiring. Let's move it forward. Let's send the patients home. So we took up this project and involved patients that had been in hospital patients during chemotherapy and asked them, would this be a good solution and, and what should be fulfilled if that was a good solution. Uh, so the, the, the key to home-based chemotherapy is this pump that we use, which is programmable. Uh, so the patients, whenever they, they receive chemotherapy, they are permanently, permanently coupled to the catheter. So they carry the chemotherapy in a bag and are coupled to the catheter. And you can then program this, pre-program this uh, pump. So you have, let's see, this course, you need two dosages of chemotherapy, morning and evening, and you program the pump to deliver this uh, for the specified time. Uh, and you can put in 100 programs, so you don't have to program it every time you deliver a course. You pre-program it, you pull up the, pro the program you need, you hook up the patient and you send the patient home and they will have their chemotherapy at home. And, and we actually decided not only to give it per patient who could actually go home, but also for inpatients. So all patients uh, had this, uh, this carry around uh, system and were much more mobile in the hospital. Of course, the price is that they have to carry, uh, they have to carry the, the, the drugs 24 seven for most of the regimens. So we had to do a lot of preparation to do this because when patients are not at, uh, in the hospital where you have all the time you need, you need to have very efficient schedules where you plan everything. Um, so the patients are only in, in our, like in a pit stop, they come in, you, you give them the chemotherapy and you send them back home again. Uh, it was a very easy thing to implement. All the staff love this project because it had a lot of quality for the patients, of course. So this is, uh, it was actually awarded uh, by a, 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 a medical magazine in Denmark. And, and here we have a picture from this, where, where the, the staff is uh, on the bed and the patient here is, is with a helmet uh, and, and the chemotherapy ready to go home. Um, this is another patient uh, at home. And I mean, I'm not going to show any quality of life data, but, but anyone can tell that a patient that can be at home will have a better quality of life than if you're in the hospital. We're actually gathering quality of life data, but it's not a controlled trial. This is a bit technical, but, but uh, so here you see, I've underlined the, the, the most frequently administered courses. And the first course of chemotherapy, it's only 20% of the, the expected in hospital days that can be saved. But in reinduction, uh, that's the second course, or in consolidation with high dose atarabin, it's up to 70% of the hospital days that are actually not hospital days, but the patient is at home. And for instance, this high dose cytarabin, you give two doses of chemotherapy, uh, one in the morning over four hours, one in the evening. The patient comes in, uh, we hook them up, they go home immediately, but the chemotherapy doesn't start until the evening. It gives a four-hour infusion, eight hours after the next infusion, another four hours infusion. Then there's a one-day break. And as you see here in the bottom, we were able to educate 75% of the AML patients to handle their own uh, catheter. So they were able to detach the chemotherapy to flush the catheter, and then they came in the next day for the second round. And they did so like three times. So what the, what, did we have any problems? No, we didn't have any serious incidents. Sometimes patients had, uh, it stopped, the pump stopped, it alarms. So the patients were, of course, very uh, thoroughly instructed to contact the department. We didn't have any spills. 
or any incomplete infusions, and many of the problems that the patients encountered could be solved over the telephone. It's very important when you have a setup like this that you have a 24-7 service in the hospital where patients can call in. Uh, we had some admissions due to fever. It's, you can't really prevent that, but not many. So this has become the standard uh, of care for AML patients. Um, and as I said, it's most challenging to di dismiss patients in the induction phase, but it's not impossible. If you have a patient who, whom you can educate rapidly in a couple of days, uh, you can actually send them home with a chemo. Um, so, and, and as has been mentioned earlier, patients really like to be actively involved in their own care, and you can definitely trust them. Sometimes it's the healthcare professionals that are afraid to send patients home, but they will contact you if there is a problem. Don't worry. So this is Mark. He's a 21-year-old, 20, now he's 24, I think, with AML, and he, he would have to spend 30 days in hospital for chemotherapy. And in his case, he spent nine hospital days, 21 days at home. And on this picture, he is driving around, around with his girlfriend with his chemo around his neck uh, in a bicycle in central Copenhagen. He said the bag and the pump gave him a mobility and a feeling of freedom. It felt like the opposite of patient involvement because I was not at the hospital. Instead, I could participate in different social arrangements, attend my school without major planning from the hospital. And the hospital were very flexible whenever possible. I could decide when I wanted to come in for a change of chemotherapy bag, which made my days much more flexible than if I would have to stay in hospital. And I have some more quotes. If we have time, I think we do. Uh, it gave a freedom to be home, and it's easier to follow any of your normal routines, sleeping in my own bed and being with a family. At the hospital, you do not have much privacy, and everything is just sad. You feel, feel more ill. The only thing I can see is that it's difficult to go to bath and you just have to think about it an extra time. Another one says, the nurse had control of everything, was well prepared and able to answer all my questions. She was good at reassure, reassuring my mother because she did not think it was a good idea I was home when I, while I got chemo. I was comfortable in the way uh, that I had a hotline number if something should happen, but nothing happened. I by no means felt unpleasant with the equipment. So what are the perspectives right now? We are carrying on a nationwide prospective study for AML patients. All the AML treating centers in Denmark uh, have this set up uh, for AML treatment and will there collect quality of life data, but we don't have a control group. I think it's so obvious. If you, can, if you can show that something is safe and feasible and a patient can be at home rather than in the hospital, you should go for it. You shouldn't have a control group and lock up patients inside the hospital to prove that this is better. I mean, it's pretty, to me, it's pretty obvious. Uh, we're doing a lot of uh, intravenous antibiotics at home as well with continuous infusion in uh, tazobactam. Uh, so that can save up a lot of time for the patients in the hospital. And of, of course, there's a, a hospital economy in this as well, but that's not the reason why we're doing it. Um, and we have a lot of other treatments that can be shifted to the outpatient. So high-dose chemotherapy with uh, autologous stem cell support is now being more and more outpatient. Uh, and some of the quite intensive uh, allogeneic stem cell transplantation uh, treatments are being given partly as outpatients. So that was it. Questions? Thank you so much.